Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you all a corn mutton pie, which you can also use corned beef to make this recipe. And I'm showing you guys both a baked version and a fried version. Both came out really well. So whichever one you want to try, feel free to. So to make this recipe, as I said, I'm using corned mutton. But if you wanted to use corned beef, of course you can. You guys know I do not cook beef in my home. So I'm going to go ahead and open this. And now this was found at Food Dung. You can even find it at Bravo or BDC West Indian Supermarket here in Florida. It's very similar to corned beef, just it has a little more fat content. Now in a pot, I'm going to go in with some oil. To that oil, I'm going to go in with my aromatics. Some chopped onions pimento peppers some chopped mini bell peppers i prefer the flavor from the mini bell peppers i'm seasoning those with a little bit of salt and i'm going to let that saute for about a minute now i'm going to go in with some chopped cabbage and i'm using the chinese cabbage here because it's a more softer cabbage whichever cabbage you have that's fine and we're going to allow that to cook and then add in some scallions, some chopped tomatoes and allow it to continue to cook. Now I'm going to add in my one tin of corned beef. Now you'll notice I didn't add a ton of salt in this. That's because usually the corned beef is very salty. So the salt from that will flavor our veggies. And yes, it looks like a ton of veggies, but trust me, it's going to wilt down and you're not going to tell. And this is a great way of stretching a buck and also getting your kids to eat healthy. So we want to allow this to cook down until all of the juices in there dry out. It will take about 5 to 8 minutes. After which, you'll just set it aside and allow it to cool down. Next, let's prepare the dough. So to my flour, I'm going to go in with some baking powder and some yeast. And I'm also going to go in with some Goya adobo or purpose seasoning for some salt. So that would be my salt element. If you wanted, you can add salt in place of. Mix and add enough lukewarm water to bring this together to form a medium to soft dough. You don't want your dough to be too soft and you don't want it to be too firm. So just in between will be perfect. You want to continue kneading that until it comes together into a smooth ball. And now that it's in a bowl, I'm going to continue kneading this for about 5 minutes. After which I'll sprinkle a little bit of oil onto the dough. Press it onto both sides. And then we'll cover this with plastic wrap. And allow it to rest for 5 minutes. After it's finished resting, we're going to remove the plastic and break these into small dough balls. Now, you can make these as big or as small as you want. I made them the size that I would like them. So make your dough balls and then once you're finished, you're going to open out your dough balls and start filling it with that filling that we made. Try and open out your dough balls evenly. Take a spoonful or two of that filling, place it into the center and then bring up the sides to close. Do not use any dry flour guys because the dry flour will prevent it from sticking. So once you seal the edges, you want to go ahead and press slightly to distribute that filling inside the pie. Now once you've done that, make sure and flour your surface well because these can stick. So flour your surface, place it on it. And once we're done, we're going to start with the baked version first. So I'm placing four of these on my baking tray. You want to line your tray just in case so they don't stick. Spritz a little bit of cooking spray over them. And then these would go into your oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 to 35 minutes until they're golden brown. So in the meantime, while we're waiting for those to bake, let's fry the rest of our pies. 
Fry these on a medium heat until they're light golden brown in color. You want to flip them on both sides. Make sure that they're cooking evenly. Now these are not going to take very long to cook because the dough itself is very thin. So about two to three minutes in total. And once they're nice golden, you take them out of your oil and drain them on some paper towels. Draining on the paper towels really helps to get rid of some of that excess oil. So here we have the fried version. And then we have our baked version. You can see the difference between the baked and the fried. I love the look of the baked version. It's so uniform. And I'm going to cut into one of the fried ones so you guys can see the distribution and how it looks on the inside. It was really nice and light and pillowy soft with a good distribution of that filling. Let's cut into the baked version. The baked version was a little more crispier on the outside, but it was really soft and pillowy inside, just like the fried. So both of these came out really well, and I did both for you guys because you all asked me if you can bake and if you can fry, so I wanted to do it in the same recipe so you guys can see the outcome. So I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. It's a really easy recipe. It freezes really well so you can pop it in your freezer and reheat anytime you're ready during this quarantine time. Comment guys, let me know down below. If you're new to my channel, I hope you like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!